welcome back to a boat called Wanda. Now, as I mentioned last update, the clock is ticking because I've only probably got three more updates before I need to put things to rest. Basically, I need to um, change my visa and I need to go back to Australia to wait for that to occur before I can come back to the UK. So that could take quite some time, maybe one, two, even three months possibly, depending on uh, how long it takes to process that. Um, and then when I do come back, I'll be in a position where I need to start looking for uh, a job. So the project's going to sort of finish up as a full-time project. Um, and that's really why I've been sort of busting my nuts trying to get uh, Wanda ready to get painted because I was hoping if I could get Wanda painted, then I could take her outside, um, sort of clean up the sheds and, you know, not be paying for uh, storage in the shed that I can't use, which is relatively expensive. So that was really what I was pushing for. And I mean, I still might get it done, but I'm kind of thinking I won't get it sprayed before I leave because, you know, the preparation, the priming and everything is just taking so much longer. And then there's all sorts of other bits and pieces like through holes that need to be closed up and fed. And as you've seen, there's just kind of little bits and pieces here and there that I'm working through. So that's where I'm heading. There's probably another three or four updates. So first up for me is to get back to that mast step and to start thinking about how I'm going to deal with that. So let's get started. Right, well this is the through hole that I uh, closed up and I put some uh, skimming material on it the other day, some fairing compound. This is the uh, 407 low density filler. There's a bit of a nick here where I dragged an extension cord over it the other day as it was setting, so that's a bit of a bugger, but um, that'll need some work. I might need to put a second skim on this, but uh, anyway, let's see how we go. Okay, so this is finished. I spent about 30 minutes on this and I just started out with an orbital sander and used that to sort of get the main thickness and ridge off the end of it. Then once that was done, I switched over to the uh, longboard and uh, used that to try and blend in the edges and, and get the right shape. And then I also used just a hand block in parts. Now, I think what's happened is I did the skim coming up this way. So the curve of the boat coming around this way longitudinally is good but I think I'm going to go back and do a second skim and this time skim it along this way because there is a slight curve in the deck coming across this way um, and what I notice is that there's a little bit of a gap when I get to here so this sort of needs to come out in the middle a bit more to keep the same form all the way across. Don't know if I'll be able to show you but as I get to here should be able to see there's a bit of a gap there um, and it really needs to sort of curve out a little bit. So not to worry, I don't need to put much skimming material down and I'd probably just need to focus on the centre bit here and then I'll go along this way. Soon we're going to do the entire hull by just filling all the little dings and bits and pieces so I'll probably uh, keep a bit of the material then and, and do the skim then. Okay, so next step for the hull is to go around and just fill up all the little dings and knocks and everything with uh, fairing compounds. So I think we're going to do that today uh, and I'm going to do that with Rob and we'll probably attack this in one go. So there's a couple of things on the hull. There's obviously little holes like that, some parts where we're through to the laminate like that. 
There's a couple of little chips around these bolt holes for the main chain plate there, the four stay chain plate. Now here you can see there's some pinholes here, but these have actually been filled in previously, so obviously Wanda's already had one respray. Now, unfortunately, I had to lose a few days out of this week because I had a pretty bad cold um, and a couple of days ago, I just didn't have the energy to come into the shed. So I had sort of two, two and a half days off. But unfortunately, I've also lost my memory card and that had about two or three days worth of video footage of it. So unfortunately, I've lost a bit of work. And so I need to sort of backtrack and bring you up to speed to where I'm at now. So you might remember I was looking at this mast step plate and this is the part that I've actually done a bit of work on. The first thing I've done is um, I've cleaned up this backside which was full of silicon and I used one of these sort of synthetic um, pieces for a, a grinder to get most of that off. The second thing I've uh, confirmed is I was concerned about the, the shape of this before as it's got quite a curve to it and I'd assume that that was all because of the compression which had actually bent it out of shape but that's not true because I went back to have a look at the heel of the mast and as you can see here the heel of the mast is actually curved as well so that when the heel sits into this mast step that um, curve perfectly matches the concave shape of the mast step. Now the challenge with that curve is as you can see here when it's laid down against a flat surface is it's going to leave me with about a seven millimeter gap here, which obviously will all be filled up with some sort of uh, silicon type compound for sealant. And so that's left me with the challenge of how to deal with this, this gap here. So after going away and thinking about it for a few days, I came up with the idea that I would do two things. The first thing is I would actually cut a little bit of a indentation into that new laminate that I just recently laid up last week. And so I used my router and cut like a two millimeter deep trench in that and then sanded it out to make it curved. And that will basically match the middle part of this curve here. Um, so basically I'm going to sink it down by a couple of millimeters so that I only then need to build up on the outside, maybe three millimeters. And then what I did is I got a piece of plywood, which is five millimeters thick. I wrapped it up in packing tape so that it's not going to stick to any um, fairing compounds and I hot glued it down in place to sit where the mast step is going to be and then I'm using that as a base to skim up to this and try and build up that area up to the top of that mast step and basically that's exactly where I'm at now so um, that brings you up to speed and I can get back to the next part of that which is to continue to fare around that. Okay, well, I'm going to have to leave the update at this point. 
I was hoping to uh, wait until I put some primer on the boat, but uh, unfortunately I'm not there yet. I've also been waiting for my delivery of um, priming materials and ancillary items, which has actually just arrived, as you can see. This came about an hour ago. So here we are. This should contain everything one needs to put some primer on the boat, including all the uh, bits and pieces, as well as the priming material itself. So next week I'll bust into this, open it up, and start to actually get some paint on the boat. So come back and see me then, and I should have a well, at least a primed bow ready for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.